Ford Fiesta ST is great. I want to get that out there right away. It's honestly, it's a brilliant car. And I hope you guys appreciate how much it pains me to say that. It really does. The, the Fiesta ST is kind of all the things that I hate in cars. It's a Ford, and I, I don't really hate Fords, but I have absolutely no love for them whatsoever, even though I actually do technically live in Essex. I've never had this thing for fast Fords. It's a hatchback. And I've never really been much of a hatchback person either. And they're also absolutely everywhere they are like a plague upon this earth honestly it, they're just all over the shop and they're bought by a lot of people that um how do i be kind about this let's just say they don't often do the image of the young driver any favors so that's some of the reasons why i'm not keen on them but i do try and be honest and fair in these things and having driven one they are utterly sublime really properly great little cars however if i was in the market for a small super mini slash hot hatch i wouldn't get a fiesta st for some of those reasons what i'd be interested in would potentially be something a little bit more like this you see today i am driving a peugeot 208 gti by peugeot sport a very snappily named car, but it's very important to pay attention to that name. You see, the Peugeot 208 GTI joined a long line of totally underwhelming and forgotten Peugeots. Do you remember the 207 GTI? No, of course you don't, because everyone forgot about it. I nearly bought one until I looked at one and realized it was just faceless. It wasn't a bad car, it just was... Ugh. And let's be honest here, that, that people do get misty-eyed and very nostalgic about some great GTIs from the past, but that was a very long time ago now. In much the same way that I really wish that Lotus would stop telling people how many F1 championships they won, because the minute they do that, the awkward topic always comes up of when was it that you actually won the last one? And so the same thing is with Peugeot, that they'll tell you how brilliant the 205 GTI was, and then they'll sort of very quickly get embarrassed after that. Now, 208 GTI came out, and yeah, it was all right, but it was no Fiesta ST, it was no mini John Cooper Works with which it shared some parts. And Peugeot look at this, and they go, right, okay. And some blokes in Peugeot went, right, hold my wine. And they created the 208 GTI 30th anniversary edition and it was a totally different beastie now you may remember the 30th when it came out because it was that weird one where the front half of it was matte black and the back was red and it's kind of had a bit of a stripe thing going on it's a weird two-tone color scheme i remember that and i suppose it's maybe quite clever of them because it's a pretty identifiable car that being said i've never actually seen one on the roads what I'm in today is essentially the production version of the limited edition because everyone agreed that actually the, the 30th was actually quite a good car. And so they thought, right, well, let's just carry on doing that. Now, it would be very easy to be quite cynical about this kind of thing and look at it and go, oh, well, all Peugeot have done is, is done the very typical thing. If they found a, a box of stickers and some fancy seats and hey, presto, new car. Not the case at all. They have absolutely gone to town on this car now it wasn't cheap when it came out oh no you're talking about 23 grand you're talking more than fiesta st money but they changed the front brakes they're now alcon items and if you don't know about them alcon are a very serious manufacturers of brakes for motorsport teams and all sorts of things they changed the front dampers they changed both shocks and springs they changed the anti-roll bars they upgraded the engine just a little bit but more importantly they essentially transplanted the whole running gear from the rczr which includes a very trick limited slip differential inside you have these nice figure hugging bucketish seats and the smallest steering wheel i've ever seen fitted to a car this side of a caterham 
And what does that do to the car? Well, first off, I can feel every single lump and bump in the road. I, honestly, it's, it's not unacceptably stiff, but if I was being nice to it, I would call it very firm indeed. However, this car's sole purpose in life is to fire you down a back road with a massive smile on your face. Conveniently, in about 60 seconds, I've got one of my favorite B roads coming up and you're gonna enjoy that then. Before I get to that though, what I wanna to talk to you about is the fact that the interior does actually feel somewhat higher quality than I thought that it might. You got the usual mixture of, of that you do in French cars of sort of scratchy plastics, but then nice glossy bits, the odd bit of leather that seems to have accidentally landed here. And the, the gear shift is a definite weak point. That is an area where the Fiesta SD scores much better than this. It's a bit ponderous, a bit vague in that way that French gearboxes often are. Uh, the pedals, similarly, they're, they're weighted a, a little bit oddly. Now the steering doesn't feel quite as super sensitive as the STs, but it does what I'm telling it to. Now in fairness, this car's owner, Nick, has warned me several times about the, the lumpy nature of this car's ride, but actually, I've encountered a lot worse. I gotta be honest about that. It doesn't sound particularly inspiring. In fact, I would say that the uh, Twingo 133 that I drove not too long ago actually sounds an awful lot better. Ah, cyclists. What a very French thing to experience. This tiny wheel is actually quite a lot of fun. It's very interesting. It's got a weird thing and actually, okay, so confession time. I have owned two Peugeots uh, before and I've also, my mum has had a Citroen as well and they, they seem to have a similar trait. The off center, the, 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 you know, from straight ahead, they're never quite super responsive. They're always a, a, a little bit, um, not unwilling, but you just have to turn it a little bit more than you think you would. I do personally quite like a sharp off-center response. That can, however, make a car a touch hyperactive. Now, today we have a nice dry road and it's actually relatively warm as well. It's 13 degrees out there. So the car shouldn't be struggling for traction anything in a straight line. Now, okay, while well, we're stuck behind the Waitrose van, let's talk more about some boring things, I guess. First off, Peugeot made the very bold claim that this will do about 50 miles to the gallon. Now, we're probably getting that now, going down this hill with a decent wind behind us, but in the real world, this does the same sort of between 30 and 40 miles to the gallon that literally every other car does. So, yeah, nothing really particular to write home about that. It is the same 1.6 litre engine that appeared in all sorts of stuff, in, including the Mini. So the engine does have known tuning potential if that is your bag. I would be tempted to put a slightly more Asbo exhaust on it or an air filter or something. But this is not a straight line speed car at all. And, and that's absolutely fine. The steering wheel is actually quite cute. I do quite like it. Now, Nick has had this since it was brand new and uh, they've put about 30,000 miles on the car. In fact, this morning it probably was sat on exactly 30,000. And in that time, it's been fine. It hasn't broken whatsoever. What it does do though, is it has a real appetite for front tires. That diff, and the fact that this car is quite enjoyable to plow down back roads means that you do go through those um, at a fair rate, let's just say. To buy, when these were new, they were quite a bit more expensive than your Fiesta ST. However, as a used bargain, they're still more expensive than a Fiesta ST. I suppose that's the price to pay for something being quite a bit rarer. Now, I couldn't tell you whether it's gonna be much cheaper to insure one of these than a Fiesta, but I suspect that it might because insurance companies are generally quite predictable and they will look at stuff based on largely statistics. 
and because Peugeot didn't sell very many of these, that means not many 20-year-olds put them in hedges. Oh, that little diff is very trick. You literally, to go around a corner, it's quite a brutish way, really, to approach things. I know people sometimes talk about hot hatches being more scalpel-like and big saloon cars being a bit more uh, brutal and aggressive and uh, sledgehammery. But actually, that's not the case with this at all. In fact, this is something of a brutish tool because you just get it into a bend and you uh, apply right foot, point it where you want it to go, and it is happy to oblige. In fact, the last thing I drove that did that sort of thing was probably the uh, full-on Clio Cup car I drove many years ago. I think I may have driven a couple of cars in the intervening time, but that front diff really does work. Now, I also drove the Renault Sport Megane, the, the newest version recently, and this does behave actually in quite a similar way. Let's just see, I'm just gonna be a thug here, just foot flat down, and it follows the camera a little bit, straight to six, up, and it bounces up here, wait, and it just doesn't care. It just goes for it, and actually, the more you lean on it, the better it gets. Stay. Those Alcon brakes work brilliantly. Oh yeah, you can fire this thing down the road. Now it doesn't, that steering never talks to you in the same way that the STs does. There's a, there's a sense of disconnect between you and the front wheels that the Ford doesn't have. That's the magic of that Ford, is it just it just talks to you. And the Megane is the same way. The Megane just speaks to you straight away. This is more of a an exploratory process. It's more of a, a, a prolonged conversation where you're like, are you sure you want to do this? And then the car's like, yeah, 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 don't worry about it, don't worry about it. And it fights the front a little bit, but it's not horrendous. And this road is not the best. Can you heel and toe in it? Not particularly easily. And the gearbox is quite easy to slip over into second. But it's got a lot of the things that I do want from a French car. It's got quirkiness, like real proper, like, oh, that's a bit different kind of quirkiness. I like it for that. I like it an awful lot. What this car loves, it would appear, is a road where 60 is very much a challenge rather than a chore. And it's very happy to do that. Would I have one over a Fiesta ST? Very good question. Very difficult question, actually. In many ways, this is still not as good as the Ford. That's, that's the truth of it. The steering is not quite as good. The gearbox is definitely not as good. The engine, in fairness, is about level pegging because in the Ford, the engine is totally uninteresting. And here, the engine is also in stock form. Nothing to write home about. I feel like if you're being, if you're talking about an out-of-the-box package, an unmodified package, I would say that the Peugeot has a lot more going for it. I like the ride of this. I don't think it's actually that compromised. When you look at things as well, like the fact that they've upped the rear suspension by something like 60%, that's a massive increase. But actually, it's not intolerable at all. I really was expecting it to be a totally bone-shaking ride. And I don't know, maybe my... Uh, Maybe my sensors have been warped by driving about in my M3 all the time and that sort of stuff, but it's not totally unacceptable. I mean, this isn't going to be a, a perfect car as a, as a cruiser at all because it's just, it's not what they do. It's not their thing. If I was going to pick one thing that I would like Peugeot to have really sorted, it would be this gearbox. It, it works absolutely fine, but it's just not exciting to use. And when you're in a car like this with a small boosty engine, you are changing gear quite frequently. And that is something the Ford just does way better. The steering wheel, I really actually do quite like this steering wheel. I've got a thing for small steering wheels and this one is ah, really nice to hold as well. I'm actually quite pleased about the fact that they haven't kind of gone mad and covered it in Alcantara, which is exactly what I'd expect them to do in this kind of car. Dials being up here and all that stuff, I'm sure that's standard 208 stuff, but I've not been in a 208 before, so it's novel to me. 
the little red accents around the place, little bits of chrome. It, it does feel like they've put some effort into trying to make it a bit of a, a nicer product, and that's appreciated, although the gear lever is kind of weird to hold. I think it's a car that definitely does take time. The Fiesta more immediately shows you its abilities, and the Peugeot is not quite so keen to share. It doesn't make it a worse car, it makes it a somewhat different car, and this has got much more in common, I would say, with something like the Yaris GRMN, which is very much a skunkworks type project where a bunch of engineers have kind of gone, right, let's see what we can make with limited time and resources, and that's exactly what they've done with this. They've gone, okay, let's, um, let's do the best that we can in the time that we have, and I'd say they've, they've not done too bad at all. I think the Fiesta is unfortunately still the, the king of the segment, but if you want something a bit different, you're not going to suffer by having one of these. So there you go. 208 GTI by Peugeot Sport. Not perfect, but it's French. It wasn't ever going to be.